Do you have any melted RV plugs that look like this? Or charred like this? Well, in our travels, we have definitely melted a few RV plugs being connected to terrible RV sockets like this that are in RV parks. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to replace either the female end or the male end to a 30 amp plug using these Camco replacements. This is $19 for the female and $17 for the male end. You can quickly and easily make your connectors and cables safe again, whether it's an extension cord like this, a dog bone like this, or the actual cable that is connected to your RV. Okay, we'll go over some of the tools that we need for this. I've got a big cutter here to be able to cut that fat cable off. If you don't have that, you can just use a utility knife. Flathead screwdriver, a, a nice sharp utility knife to cut the outer casing. A wire stripper for the wires inside. A Phillips head screwdriver to undo the screws on the uh, new connectors. A measuring tape and a marker. I have a power driver just to make putting the screws in a little bit easier. Okay, here's the female plug. It comes with an instruction sheet that gives you a very specific way to strip and cut the wires to the proper length so they fit really well inside the casing. Let me just pop this out. It comes like this. There's three screws that hold the case together. There's one in the center and these two screws. I'm going to pull those apart. That pulls the case apart. It leaves those three screws. And inside, you've got the three terminal connectors. You've got the black wire, the green wire, and the white wire connect there. The only other thing is you have this is the strain connector. Takes the strain off the off the cable. You're gonna have to undo this like this. And the strain connector has a couple of different settings depending on the thickness of your cord. And there is a guide in the instructions depending on how fat your cord is. My cord is about a, a 0.6, uh, a little over 0.6 inches. Uh, fat so I am going to use this particular setting. So that is the female 30 amp connector. Now the male 30 amp connector has a, a different instru instruction set because the way you cut the wires is different in the uh, male connector than it is in the female connector. So let me open this up. Flip that over, got those three screws out of there. Flip this over like that. Now you have to be careful with this male one because these will pop out. And you don't want to make sure you, you switch them and get the orientation wrong. Um, the reason these pop out is so that you can connect the uh, connectors uh, and tighten them. You can push them out like that. So all three of them come out and attach. So there's green, the black, and the white. Here's the male connector. And here's the female connector. They would definitely work a little bit different. Campco also makes 50 amp male and female plugs and installing them is very similar to installing the 30 amp ones. I just find it's much more common to melt the 30 amp plugs than the 50 amp. First, we're gonna replace this uh, female connector on my extension cord here. This is my female and we're gonna cut this off and get started. Now I've got a really nice cutter for this which is great so I'll be able to cut this just in one file swoop if you don't have a cutter like this you can just use a blade you can just use a utility knife like this and cut it but it's nice that I have this so that's what that looks like inside that's gone okay now we got our nice new cord here and we've got to cut three inches from the end so we want three inches and we need my marker. Got three inches. Being really careful not to go too deep. Okay, 
It's a good idea to take some time and inspect the insulation of your wires to make sure you didn't cut through. Okay. So we got our, our black, our green, and our white. According to these instructions, the white and black wire should be stripped half an inch. The green wire should be cut one and a quarter inches off. One and a quarter. So we're going to take this and we're going to cut that off there. So I'm going to use my number 10 gauge stripper here. If you don't have the proper wire strippers for 10 gauge, you can just use your utility knife to cut around the insulation and then uh, pull it off uh, manually instead of using a stripper. And then we're going to get a half an inch off of here. Good. So all three wires are stripped. Okay, now we got our wire strip and I've got them bent into the angles that will fit into these connectors like this. They'll fit into there like that. The black on black, white on white, and green on green. The first thing I need to do is loosen the set screws here. And you can see if you look through those holes there, you can see the where the wire is going to go through those little holes. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to use these copper, um, these uh, silver plated copper ferrules over each one. So it just helps keep the uh, wires nice and neat and keeps them from spreading out. So I'm going to put the black one in first. Make sure that's all in. Using the ferrules is not necessary. I just like them to keep the wires neat and I think they provide a little better conductivity. And you can see when you pull these out, that's what they look like. You can see that I got that wire all the way through and it looks good. Let's do the white one. Again, I'm going to put a ferrule on here. Put it inside, make sure that's backed up enough. Now the last one here is the green. You take my ferrule. Now I want to make sure that I have these in when I do this so I know all the wires are the right length. So I'm going to take the green one. I got the green one in there with the ferrule. And we're going to tighten that green one down. Now we've got all three wires in there, nice and tight. Now what you have to do is put the casing back on. Put the casing on like that. Flip it over. Put our, put our three screws in. Before you screw down the case, make sure you tug on each one of the wires to make sure they are firmly connected. Now according to um, the guide, Mine is 0 .6, 0 0.6 inches wide, so I'm going to use this particular connector like this. If it's smaller, you can put it in like this, but that would have to be a very, very small wire. If it's really big, you just leave it alone and you put it on like that. But we're going to put it together like this, and we're going to slide it over the wire. Flip it over and screw it in. Be careful when using a power driver to have a loose chuck. You don't want to over tighten and strip the screws or the plastic. Finish it off with just a regular screwdriver. Nice and tight. And there you go. You can see that's on there nice and tight. And we got our new connector all connected. Okay, now we're going to do the mail plug. And the wiring is a little bit different for the mail plug. So for the wiring for the mail plug, we're going to have to cut back 
the black and white wire, we're gonna to to cut an inch and a quarter down and cut those off. And then we're gonna strip a half an inch off the top of the green and then a half an inch off the white and black once we've cut them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the black and the white. I use my 10 gauge stripper. We're gonna cut a half an inch off here, off the green. And then we're gonna cut a half an inch off here. And a half an inch off the white. So here's the orientation these are gonna go in, the black, the white, and the green. You can just pull these, push this out, push out the green, and loosen this up. So I'm gonna stick a ferrule on there. It goes in there like that. And then we'll take this. And that's nice and tight. That's not going anywhere. So that's the green. The green will go like that. And we're going to do the black. Black is going to go in there like that. Last one is the white. And we want the white one to go like this. Like that. Put the terminals in there. Stick them down in there like that. Again, I can make sure these are tight. Pull it out a little bit. <clears throat> push it in. Push it out a little bit. Tighten it, push it out a little bit, tighten it, okay. Those are very, very tight. Again, we're using the same insert. Okay. Tighten that, this goes on here like that. Take it, take it like this, flip it over, put our three screws in. Okay, let's tighten those in. Okay. Well, I got my new plug on my cord here and ready to put it back into operation and for it to get melted at another crappy RV park socket, but that's just the way it is. At least now you know how to replace either the male or female ends of your power cords and get them back into operation. Now, if you found this video helpful and you want to see more, please consider subscribing to our channel. It's really important to us. Just click the link right down there. We would love it if you would comment on this video. Do you have any experience using these Camco connectors? Please share your experience in the comments. If you have any questions, please leave me also those in the comments. You can also comment on our Instagram and Facebook pages. And remember, downsizing does make sense.